Are you looking for a down-home, versatile, comforting loaf of bread that is simple to make, yet beautiful to look at, and pairs well with almost anything? Well, you've come to the right place. Today, we were exploring the world where France meets Panama and sparks fly. Well, at least for the Panamanians. Welcome to Summer Bakes the World. Summer here baking traditional breads from around the world, providing a little history and lots of tips. Join me on this journey, whether in my kitchen or yours, and together we can discover the world. The Panama Canal, such a feat. An engineering marvel that bridges countries and cultural gaps. It truly is, and was at the time, a multicultural wonder. I mean that in the sense that the physical construction during the late 1800s to early 1900s brought people together like no other event has ever done. Imagine blending cultures from China, Africa, Middle East, Europe, and the United States. Magic was bound to happen as people learned from others. They each truly learned the best the corners of the earth could offer and then integrated that into their own lives. We are so lucky that food became the cornerstone of those cultural connections. That leads us to today's bake. The Panamanians were intrigued with the long, crusty exterior French baguettes and the simple French miche bread known as the round loaf. So they modified those recipes to create the simple, clean, white flour only pan micha known as the round loaf but Panamanian style. Here are the ingredients. This bread, while simple to make, is quite the sight to see, just like the Panama Canal. For this recipe, you're going to need yeast, granulated sugar, salt, butter, milk, bread flour, an egg, and then of course, water. This is a pretty basic recipe. The final result though might surprise you. It really is a cross between a crunchy French baguette and a soft loaf of country white bread. First, we need to bloom the yeast. In a large bowl, we're going to add and dissolve two and a quarter teaspoon of yeast, one teaspoon of sugar, and then a quarter cup of warm water. And we're just going to whisk this together and let it sit for five minutes to give it time for the yeast to bloom. Now, my water is between 100 and 110 degrees. We need it a little warm so we can activate this yeast. It's been five minutes, which means our starter is ready and it has bloomed. So as you can see, it's a little frothy on top. That means we're ready to add the rest of the ingredients. To our starter, we're gonna add two teaspoon of salt. We're gonna whisk it in. We're gonna add two tablespoons of melted butter. Just make sure your melted butter is not too hot. So I just microwaved my butter until it was just melted, but no, no longer than that, because we don't want it to be too hot to kill the yeast. Then we're gonna add two tablespoons of sugar. And finally, we're going to add two cups of warm milk. And I did warm it in the microwave to between 100 and 110 degrees, and it's just a little over 100 degrees right now. So it's just where we want it to be. And I am using whole milk here. So we are just going to whisk in this warm milk. Again, all your ingredients should be close to the same temperature because we want to make sure our yeast stays bloomed, but yet we don't kill the yeast. So the last ingredient we add is our bread flour here. I have two cups already measured in the bowl and then I am on my third cup here and I wanted to quickly remind you that when you're scooping bread flour, remember not to put your measuring cup in the container but fluff it up in the container or use a spoon to put it into your measuring cup and then once you fill it up, then just rake off the remaining and then you don't get too much flour than you uh, wanted because you could easily add another tablespoon or two to your measuring cup. So we're gonna whisk in three cups of flour here and then we're going to move to my favorite wooden spoon to add in another two cups. We just want to moisten this flour. Take a look at this dough with our first three cups of flour. It is still a very wet dough but when you whisk all the flour in and you whisk it well just make sure you put the effort into it then you'll get all the flour lumps out of it and if you have a few in there it's okay because you're going to knead it and you're going to knock them all out anyway. All right, so I'm gonna to move to my favorite spoon, which is my wooden spoon. 
And this is, this is my favorite one because of course, like I've said before, it's a short handle. I can't break it when you're stirring in a lot of flour. Now we're gonna add two cups of flour. So we have three in here. We're just gonna stir in these two. And I'm gonna likely add about five and a half total. This is five cups right here. And if I need to add another half a cup or a cup, then I am just going to knead it in by hand instead of stirring it in. So let's stir this really well. So all five cups have been stirred in. Let's take a look at this. So notice it's still very sticky. We might be able to add another half cup flour to this, but we're going to simply knead it in as we work the dough. That'll take care of any dough that's still too wet. So let's prepare a surface. You definitely need a surface on which you can knead. So as I typically do is put a, a towel down, a dish towel, and then you know how much I love my big plastic board. It is awesome for kneading and it doesn't move as I'm moving that dough around. All right, we've got our board ready. Take off my ring. So I have my half cup here of flour that I intend to knead into the rest of this dough and we're just going to scoop it out onto our floured surface and we're going to knead for about 10 minutes or so until the dough is elasticy. We want that tacky, not sticky dough, which is what we have right now. This is really sticky because it's gonna stick to my fingers. Now, when we're, when we're kneading, you wanna put a lot of effort into the kneading. We wanna make sure that gluten gets well developed because remember, the gluten are these thread-like fibers that have to stretch. We need to put air into those fibers to allow them to stretch and to grow. When you're kneading, if you've seen these videos before, you know how I like to knead. Pull the dough sides up and then you're gonna uh, rotate the dough towards you and then using the palm of your hand, push it forward and really push that dough forward because what we're trying to do is get the inside of this dough to the outside to allow the gluten fibers to stretch. If you want to manipulate your dough, bounce it around and poke at it, you go right ahead. A lot of people like to do it that way. That way you're making sure to get into the center of this dough. You could also cut this in half. And if you wanted to knead in smaller loaves, you could do that to make sure that you get a well kneaded dough. So you just need however you feel like. This is the time to take out all of your aggression from the week or the day or the previous hour. It's totally up to you how you need this. You could even do some karate chops. Whatever you want to do in order to get this dough at the consistency that you need it. Remembering to pull up your sleeves in the process. All right, I'm needing here. I've been needing for a couple of minutes, but I want to show you something. So take a look at this. The outside doesn't look that bad, right? It's not that sticky or just a little tag when that's sticky, but if we were to go into the inside of this dough, check how sticky it is. It's sticky when the dough comes off onto your fingers. So as long as it's sticky, we need to continue kneading. If it's just tacky like the outside is right now, that's good. But the inside is still really sticky. So this dough is not ready. That tells us we need another couple more minutes. All right, I've been kneading for a while now. I want to show you something. Look at that, there are bubbles that are starting to pop out in this dough because of all the air getting in between those glutinous fibers, those threads. So next is to let it rise. So I have my big bowl here. I'm gonna spray the bowl just to keep the dough from sticking to it. Put the dough in there, spray even the dough. You could also spray the plastic wrap if you want. I'm just gonna do the dough for this and then put the plastic wrap on top. I have my oven set at 200 degrees on top of which I'm going to place my bowl of dough here so that it can rise and we're gonna let it rise for an, an hour, hour and a half until it's doubled in size. It's been about an hour and a half and the dough has risen. It's more than doubled in size. So it's reaching the top of the bowl, the bottom of the plastic. So now we're simply going to just deflate it and scoop it out onto our floured surface. Okay, let's take this plastic off and let's remove the dough from the bowl. Okay, the plastic came off super easily. All right, let's flour our surface a bit here because we are gonna do just a tad bit more kneading and then we're going to shape it. Okay, notice that dough just falls right out of there. Not a whole lot of deflating needing to be done. All right, so we're just gonna knead it just like, ooh, look at that. Oh, I love to knead dough when it's been rising. It's so soft. Okay, we're just gonna deflate it by kneading it just a tad. We don't wanna add any more flour to it. It's got plenty of flour in it. We're actually gonna make two loaves out of this. 
Okay, we're going to shape this into a nice little rectangle, like a loaf pan size, but we're going to divide it in half and put it in two loaf pans. Boy, this certainly is a, an apron day. I'm getting flour everywhere. So let's cut this in half. We're just going to eyeball it. Again, I'm using my favorite serrated, serrated knife for this. Okay, and then we're going to knead it just a little bit more just so we can get just a nice shape going here. All right, so we're putting the other one out of the way. Now we're going to work with this one here. So we're going to make an artisan bread out of these two loaves. For the first step is that we need to make a nice rectangle. So we're just going to shape it with our hands. You don't need a rolling pit or anything. And then we're going to do some fancy folding. Well, not really, but it's nice to say that. So because the Panamanians got this recipe, this bread, uh, idea from the French. There's got to be some French technique involved in the whole folding process. So we're going to actually, let's stretch it out a bit. Okay, now that we have this in a nice semi-rectangle here, we're going to do what we call the French omelet or letter fold. So basically it's in thirds. We're going to roll my side towards the center and then we're going to pinch it so that it seals. Still some bubbles forming here that's inside of this nicely formed dough. Look at that bubbles. Pinch it. Then you're going to take the other side and also fold it towards the center. See it looks like a little envelope since we're in the thirds here. Now this is not perfect and I know that but we can manipulate it to the point of this kind of a loaf pan dough, you can manipulate it with your hands. Try to get it symmetrical as much as you can. So we have our fold in our crease in the center there. Voila, this is our fancy French fold. It's an alliteration there, isn't it? FFF. So then we're gonna grab one of our pans and I have two loaf pans that I have sprayed with cooking spray. One's a little smaller than the other. I'm gonna lay my, my roll here to look at the width of it based on the pan. Okay, and I'm gonna turn it over because we're gonna put it seam side down in the pan. Now my bread, if it's a little bit longer, what you would simply need to do is I kind of measured it. The dough comes about this far from the edge of the pan. So I'm gonna add some seam, a little bit of seam here because we want the top to be nice and pretty and smooth. And then we're just going to fold once we make that crease with our hand, we're just gonna fold it under and make it nice and tight. Okay, we're gonna do it both sides. And then again, you just sort of manipulate it. And we do have a lot of air in this dough. You can see it from all the bubbles that are, that are building and that's what you want. We want a nice, pretty, airy dough here. So then we're just going to put it in the pan. And there we go, that's our first one. And we're gonna do the same with the other. All right, so both are ready. Okay, and this one's already starting to rise a little bit. Okay, we're just gonna cover these with plastic wrap. I've sprayed it and I'm gonna leave a little extra room at the top in case they do rise above the pan. There'll be room for the plastic to move out of their way. So again, leave a little bit of space. Tuck in the ends, edges, so that you're preventing any drafts from getting inside of these pans in a warm space for about an hour or so. So we have 15 minutes left in our rise. So we need to preheat our oven to 375 degrees and we're going to put a cookie sheet, empty cookie sheet on the bottom rack level of the oven. So take a look. So empty cookie sheet. My bottom rack is as low as it'll go. So I'm gonna sit the cookie sheet on that rack, put the top rack on the middle level. This is where we're gonna put our bread. And then we're gonna set the oven to 375 degrees. And I'll explain the cookie sheet when it's time. Now that our dough has risen enough, let's add the final touches. Look how pretty they are in their pans. So we're just gonna remove our plastic wrap. Remember we sprayed our plastic wrap, so it came off the dough very easily. And we left a little bit of space on the wrap so the dough could rise above the pans, which they did. We're gonna do a little bit of an egg wash over both of them because this is an artisan loaf. So we want it to be pretty and we're gonna also throw on some flour. Well, I use throw on a little loosely there. We're gonna dust, how about that, some flour onto each of these so we can get that flourly, flourly, flowery, that flowery, pretty artisan look. We're also gonna cut some shapes into these guys too to make um, them look really pretty. And although I'm not artistic, it may not turn out so great for me, but if you are, maybe you can do a better job than I will. So remember that one egg that we had in our recipe? Well, now we're using it for the um, top. So all I did was light beat one egg. So the next step is to do some slicing here and I'm never comfortable slicing in my bread but we're gonna do the best we can. I'm gonna do crisscross so I'm gonna do a slash here, a slash here, and a slash here and then go back and try to do a couple more slashes. So they'll end up being little diamonds. That's my hope. So what I've done before and it worked 
So we've got one, let's maybe we'll do four. Two, we'll do, well, maybe three, I don't know. Okay, maybe one more, there. All right, so then I'm gonna try going the other way. Yeah, I'm never confident about cutting my bread. I'm gonna do a little slicing, how about that? Okay, so you get the idea. This one's not very pretty. Let's see if I can make it a little better. So you get the idea. So you can put a little pattern in there if you want. Again, I did little crisscrosses. I'm gonna do the same again because that sort of worked for me. So you just kinda wanna run the knife like that. And like that. All right, it's ideal. I think that's how it's supposed to work. Then we're gonna go to the other side. Now they're both slashed in our little diamond shapes. And even, look at that, even though I slashed it, look how it's still rising there in the center. It didn't do much as far as deflating it. That one might actually be our prettier one. Last step, let's dust a little bit of flour so we can get that artisan look. There might be a better way of doing this, but this is what I'm gonna do. So here we go. So I'm gonna set these aside for a moment, put them back over the warm oven in the warm area and let them continue to rise a little bit before we put them in. While our two pans of dough are resting for the moment while our oven gets up to that 375 degrees, we're going to boil one cup of water. And this is where that cookie sheet comes into play. When we go to put the pans of dough in the oven, we're gonna pour that cup of boiling water in that bottom cookie sheet, and that's going to create the steam that we need for that crunchy exterior of the bread that we tend to know as a baguette. Baguette crunchy exterior with the soft interior. That's what we're looking for. So that's what the boiling water is gonna do. Our one cup of water has boiled. So now we're gonna put the pans in the oven first. So I've got my one cup of boiling water here. We're just gonna pour it in the cookie sheet. Hear that sizzle, quickly close the door. And we're gonna set the timer for 35, 40 minutes and then we're gonna check the bread to see if it's done about the 35, 40 minute mark. And you know your bread is done. If you want the fail safe method, use a thermometer and test it. Just put it in the bread and when it reaches 190 degrees, then the bread is ready. Our loaves of bread just came out of the oven. Take a look. Aren't they beautiful? The little bit bigger loaf rose a little higher and I think my cutting marks are much better on that one. Um, you can definitely see the artisan flower look and of course the egg wash made it a beautiful brown color. So you can really see the little diamond shapes or squares, whatever you wanna call them. For this one, if you remember the little smaller one, my slice marks weren't quite as deep. So you definitely wanna do that quarter to a half inch depth of slice or cut when you go to make the artisan marks. So I think this one is by far the prettier one, but I guarantee you they're gonna taste the same. So they're gonna be good all around. Okay, this one is cooled enough. We're gonna take this one out of the pan and then we'll take a nice little look at it. Well, I just fell right out of the pan. I did run a knife around it right before I um, did that. It's still really warm. So that's what it looks like out of the pan. Okay, and let's give it a slice. Okay, and let's look at the center here. All right, take a look at that. It's really pretty, really a pretty bread. You can see all the little holes in it where the gluten has developed. Let's do a tear. So it looks like a traditional country white bread, doesn't it? The chop feels a little hard, but it's not quite the crunchy baguette that you would expect, I suppose. But it really is a pretty loaf nevertheless. Let's give it a taste. Scott is joining us again today as our trusty taste tester. Hi, Scott. Hi. <laughs> You get to partake in the best part of this process. So if you will, go ahead and take a bite. And while you're tasting, I'll just simply describe its roots and then you can talk about the flavors. There must be gluten in this one. Uh, yeah, yeah, there's gluten in it. That's why I'm not tasting it. <laughs> so since you're chewing and focusing on your taste buds, this bread is called pan micha. It's a bread from the country of Panama in, in Central America. It has its roots in France, thanks to the diversity of the workers on the Panama Canal in the late 1800s. And this bread is a blend of cultures, a cross between a baguette and a simple country white bread. All right, now that you've had a chance to taste and focus, what are your thoughts? Definitely not like a baguette. Baguette is a little bit more plain. Does that make sense? Yeah, I would say that. Whereas this has a little bit more um, 
kind of nuanced flavors, but yeah, a good basic bread, soft uh, in the center. Does have a hard exterior, not as hard as a baguette though. Would you classify this as a good bread for maybe a sandwich bread? Yeah, I think it would be a good sandwich bread. How about uh, for dunking in soups? Chilies. Yeah, just because it's kind of a, a plain bread, I would say it would be good kind of a, a side for soups or things like that. Okay. All right. Well, thanks, Scott. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> a simple yet classy looking bread. Its versatility is endless. Eat it as a sandwich bread, as Scott suggested. Toast, soup dunker, or snack with any topping you desire. Sit back and enjoy the fruits of your labor. Thanks for watching. For this recipe and additional information on this bread and Panamanian culture, please see the links in the description below this video. If you haven't already, remember to subscribe to my channel, hit the notifications button so you'll be informed of all newly added videos, and share my channel with your family and friends. Your support is greatly appreciated. So until next time, go bake the world!